I want to go over today a problem in MyLabs Plus where we find the margin of error. Of course, we're going to be using StatCrunch to find our confidence intervals. Now, one thing I would recommend before you start any of the homework problems is actually opening StatCrunch in a separate browser window. If you look on the side menu in MyLabs, you can actually access the StatCrunch website here. And then if you actually click on the StatCrunch website here, it'll actually open up in a separate browser window and then you can open StatCrunch directly from there. Now what I usually do is I grab this tab and kind of move it and position it on my computer screen uh, in a place where it's kind of easy to access while I'm doing the homework. So I'll basically have StatCrunch to the side of my homework assignment while I'm working it. So it's easy to find these confidence intervals. Um, and then of course from there, uh, we're gonna be finding the margin of error. So that's the sequence that they will go in. So let's look at a problem where you have to go through the parts, finding the best point estimate, uh, which we've already done in, in several problems previously to this. But we also had to construct a confidence interval as well as find the margin of error E. And there are a couple different ways you can actually find margin of error E. Um, these are two of the ways listed in this problem, but of course there are more. So first off, um, we do need the middle of our confidence interval, our point estimate um, right here. And of course, this is where you take your number of success. So in this problem, a drug is used to prevent blood clots in certain patients. In clinical trials among 4,900 and 54 patients, uh, 173 developed adverse reaction to nausea, of uh, nausea. Um, and then it says construct 99% confidence interval um, for the people who, uh, for the proportion of adverse reaction. So we basically want to take for our p hat, this will be the 173 divided by the 4945 or 54 right here. Um, of course, we do need to divide this out. Um, on our calculator, but basically it's this fraction right here. Uh, so I do want to have a calculator handy where I can do this fraction, 173 divided by, and then this will be your total number of patients. Um, so once you get this right here, um, it says to round it to three decimal places. So it'll be 0.035 roughly. So this will be our fraction that we put in here. 0.035. Now that's the middle of our confidence interval when we set it up. And of course, to do the confidence interval itself um, for part B, we do need to go to StatCrunch or some kind of technology to find the confidence interval. Um, so this is where I definitely suggest having StatCrunch kind of pulled up to the side of your homework so it's easy to kind of access your StatCrunch. Now, to make a confidence interval, we're going to go to Stat. And then we want to go to proportion stats. Um, we're going to do one sample proportion stats um, with summary data here. Okay, um, so when we pull this up, we'll have our number of success, uh, number of observations, and then we want to pick confidence interval. Now we had 173 adverse reactions out of 4,954 patients. Um, and then we want to make a confidence interval of 99%. So 0.99, and then we compute. On this one right here, um, we once we get our output here, we want to put in our lower limit and upper limit, which is our confidence interval uh, limits. So we'll put these into my labs, zero to, we want to do three decimal places, so zero to eight, and then the upper limit will be 0 0.042 right there. Now, this is the part that's kind of new here that you haven't done before. It's you identifying the margin of error E. And you have a few different methods you can use to calculate this. But yeah, you do have to find the confidence interval stat crunch first before you go into finding this margin of error. You can actually do it one of two ways. You can take your higher, your upper confidence lim limit and then subtract the p hat that you got in the beginning so the basically the middle of your confidence interval okay it's like 0.035 is actually the direct middle of 0.028 and 0.042 so basically you find the distance between you know 0.042 
and 0.035. That's one way to do it. And definitely have your calculator out to do that. So you'll basically do a subtraction, 0.042 minus 0.035. So that's one way you can find the margin of error. Now another way is, okay, if you go from the middle to the bottom, to the like lower number, you could also do a subtraction that way where you take the middle number, the p hat, subtract the lower side. Um, if you remember, the margin of error is basically how far it takes to get from the middle to one of the edges. So it looks like our margin of error is 0 0.007. You can find it, like I said, a couple different ways. Um, and then once you get that right there, um, we can actually put our answer uh, from part you know A and part C into p hat plus or minus e form. It's just another way to write that original interval. The interval right here in part B, we can now write it as 0 .00 0.035, so the p hat, the best point, the point estimate, that's the middle of the interval, and then plus or minus 0 0.007, the margin of error. Okay, so this is basically how you'll use Stack Crunch along with your basic calculator to find margin of error on some problems.